Hello everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful beaver. This, of course, is a very, very special listener episode dedicated to Harrison and to Lisa, who wrote in via Instagram. This episode would not be possible without your recommendations, and this podcast would not be possible without each and every one of you out there listening I am so grateful to be a part of your routine, whether it's in the morning, whether it's at night, just before bed. It doesn't matter. I am just so happy that you're able to join me every single week and we're able to dive into some of these animals. And whether or not you are attentive or you're relaxing or you're just plain sleeping, I am happy for the company. If you want to have an animal on the podcast, you can write into the show in two ways, one of which is the most popular, which is through Instagram. You can write to relax with animal facts, or you can send an email to relax with animal facts at gmail.com. It does not really matter which way you choose to message the show. Instagram, I think, is a little more fun because we're able to do quizzes and stuff together uh, every day or every other day, so we're able to learn and recap stuff that we've learned on the show. But anyways, I want to move on to a review left by one of you guys. This is written by CTB Ham via Apple Podcasts, writing all the way from the United States, all the way maybe is not a good term to use because that is not so far from uh, from the great white north of Canada where I am. But CTB Ham writes, I listen to each episode like four or five times before I can actually make it to the end. That's a compliment. Better than a sound bath. Thank you for the very kind and generous reviews that you guys leave for the show. And CTB Ham, I am so happy that the podcast can be of use to you and is even better than a sound bath. And I have to be honest here in saying that I don't know what a sound bath is. So if one of you guys out there want to reach out and let me know what that is, I would love to uh, be more in the loop. But a sound bath sounds quite nice. So I'll take it as a as a very good compliment. If you love this podcast and want to help it grow and support it, you can leave a wonderful review like CTB Ham did. That way I can read your awesome messages on the podcast and we can bring more and more people into our animal podcast family. But we are going to move on to the actual show I am so excited to learn about beavers. I have a tremendous respect for these little guys, or as we'll learn, maybe they're not so little. I got my facts from Live Science and Canadian Geographic. .ca, the most Canadian website that I have ever heard of. If you want to learn more about beavers and a lot of other animals, I am sure you can visit those resources. I will be posting them in the show notes of this episode. Now, why don't we get into the relaxation? I want all of you to go through your bodies and see where you are carrying or harboring some tension that you don't really need. Maybe this is at the end of the day and you've been doing a lot of walking around. So maybe it's your feet or your legs or your back or your neck. Maybe this is right 
at the morning time where you're making coffee or you're driving to work, but I think I am always so surprised at how tense I can be right at the start of the day, and it's usually in the shoulders for me. So once you've found the part or the parts of the body that feel a little bit more tense than you'd like them to be, do your best to just relax them. It's nothing you have to really force, but you can consciously try to relax them as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the freshwater rivers and lakes where beavers reside. So first we have to talk about what is a beaver. Well, beavers are among some of the largest living rodents in the world, the biggest being an animal that we already covered on the show, which is the capybara. But the beaver has thick fur, webbed feet, flattened and scale-covered tails. They also have those signature powerful jaws and strong teeth that will allow them to fall trees in order to build homes and dams. This is one of the few animals, of course, if we exclude humans from this criteria, they are one of the few animals that can change and truly change their environment in drastic ways. So these little guys, or rather big guys when it comes to the rodent family specifically are often equated with being busy and we see idioms being used all the time like busy beaver or busy as a beaver or eager beaver. These are all sort of synonymous with being this industrious and very hardworking animal, which they certainly are. Now, when we look at the species of beaver, we have something that doesn't happen very often on this show, and it is that there are only two species of beaver, and that is the American beaver and Eurasian beaver. The American beaver will weigh about 60 pounds, for those of you that like kilograms, don't worry, you don't have to pull out your calculators. It is about 27 kilograms and will be from 23 to 39 inches, which is about 60 to 100 centimeters long. Their tail will offer another 7.75 to 12 inches or 20 to 30 and a half centimeters to its length according to National Geographic. So we see just how much more the tail can add on to the body size. But we've covered animals, specifically many lizards on this show, in which the tail might be the same length as their body or even longer. So this isn't something that we haven't seen in the past. The Eurasian beaver is going to be close to the same size, weighing from 29 to 77 pounds, which is about 13 to 35 kilograms, and will be between 29 to 53 inches or 73 to 135 centimeters in length. One way to tell them apart will be that their tails are going to be a little narrower than that of the American beaver, and their skulls are going to be a bit smaller as well. But it is a nice thing to see that there aren't 200 or 300 species of beaver, and that for once we just have two. The beaver is switching it up here. The beaver, of course, has large teeth. Their upper incisors are from 20 to 25 millimeters long, and they will continue to grow throughout a beaver's lifetime. And we can see particularly why that would be a good thing. Their teeth are 
pretty much everything to these guys. It is how they build. It is how they fell trees. It is their livelihood, I guess you could say. Without them, they wouldn't be able to go to work. So we see here that having teeth that don't stop growing like many other animals that we've covered on the show, is an adaptation that for them is going to be a life or death situation. Beavers have adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle, meaning that they are not 100% all the time in the water, but most of the time, spending that time out of the water, usually to do their business of chopping trees down. So with the semi-aquatic lifestyle, they have some anatomical adaptations to live this way. They have closable nostrils and ears, something that I think many of us have wanted at some time in our lives, to be able to have these natural earplugs or nose plugs. They also have a transparent eye membrane. And speaking of anatomy, both male and female beavers have a pair of scent glands that are called casters. They will be at the base of the beaver's tail. They will use the secretions from these glands to mark their territory. And they have a special one that is called castorium, which is a musk-like substance to say, hey, this is my territory. This is where I go to work. You guys can go to work over there. Now, I'm going to take a quick break just to take a drink of my juice here. You guys heard that right. This is, I think, a very memorable moment in the podcast's history because it is one of the only in which I am not drinking tea. I ran out of chamomile tea. It's Sunday and I didn't feel like going to the store, so I made some cranberry juice with little mango chunks in it. Now, I know that might sound weird, so before you turn off the show thinking I'm a weirdo, don't knock it until you try it. I get frozen fruit, usually mangoes, because they're probably my favorite fruit, as we learned on a previous episode, and I'll put ginger ale or I'll put cranberry juice like I did today, and it's fantastic. It's like a little treat at the bottom of the cup. If any of you out there try it, please let me know by sending me an email or an Instagram message. So all beavers need water to survive. This will mean that they will live in freshwater ponds, lakes, rivers, swamps, and marshes as well. Keep in mind that at the top of the show, whenever I say where we're going, I have to nail it down a little bit for the sake of a nice little segue or intro into our facts. Many a time, they will be in more than one place, but sometimes they will be in only one place in which I won't clarify later into the show. I think one of my favorite facts of this show is what they call their homes, or what we call their homes, rather, but I'd like to think that they do too. Their homes are called a lodge, and lodges are those little dome-shaped houses that they make themselves from woven sticks, grasses, and moss plastered with mud. They can be up to 8 feet wide, that's about 2.4 meters, and up to 3 feet or 1 meter high inside, according to ADW. So these are not small lodges. These are animals building themselves their little dream house. 
I would like to think that there's this little romantic story of beavers building houses for each other, kind of like we have that really popular movie, uh, The Notebook. So I would pay personally for a notebook rendition of a beaver remake. Lodges are built on the banks of ponds, on islands, or on lake shores as well, just barely above the water level. They will also build themselves little underwater back doors for instant swimming access, or maybe even a fire exit. I added that last part. That last part isn't true, but they do have a wonderful little back door in case they need to get in and out a little bit faster. And one fact that's super interesting is that beavers are not diurnal. Diurnal means that they are awake mostly for the day, while the beaver prefers to be awake mostly during the night. They are primarily nocturnal. They will spend most of their time eating and building. Now we talk many a time on this show with the specific animals and their impacts on their environment and on the ecosystem. The beaver probably has one of the most tremendous impact on ecosystems of any of the animals that we've covered thus far. The dams that they build aren't just a nice fashion statement, but they can alter the flow of rivers and can cause floods of hundreds of acres of land. Dams will also prevent erosion and raise the water table, which will help purify the water as silt builds up and breaks down toxins. As the sediment and debris build up, carbon increases and nitrogen decreases, and these chemical changes will alter the type of invertebrates and the new water source will attract new species of fish and amphibians and birds. Flooded timber will eventually die off and the forest will become a beautiful open water ecosystem. So we see here that they are one of the few animals which directly create, impact, or change entire ecosystems, not by affecting the food chain directly, but by altering the physical characteristics that make up the ecosystem to begin with. So I think that it is so amazing that humans aren't the only ones that affect the environment from agriculture and from creation and building, beavers do the same. And trees don't just provide them with the relevant materials that they need to build their homes, they will also eat them. Unlike other mammals, beavers can digest cellulose, which is a major component of their diet. They will eat roots and bark, willows, leaves, maples, and poplar trees. They will also eat a good selection of aquatic plants. And they are very social and will live in groups called colonies. One lodge is often the home for one monogamous beaver couple. So they move out, they make their house together, and they move in and start their beaver life. Beavers will mate during the winter time from January to March, and the Eurasian beaver has a gestation period of about 60 to 128 days, upon which they will give birth from one to six babies that will weigh about 8 to 22 ounces. And the baby beavers are called kits. The American beaver will have a gestation period of about 105 to 107 days, so quite different from the Eurasian beaver. 
and they will give birth to up to four kits that will weigh between 9 and 21 ounces, very similar to the Eurasian beaver. But we see that the American beaver gives birth to two less kits on average. And the beavers have bodies that aren't only adapted for eating trees, but highly adapted to the water. They will have a tail that will act as a rudder, and those webbed feet will allow them to be very dynamic in the water. They can also stay underwater for about 15 minutes at a time, which is nothing to sneeze at. And the last fact before we go into the name beaver, where does it come from? It is that beavers do not hibernate. They will continue to eat and build all the way through the winter time. So the cold doesn't bother them much. They might just spend a little bit more time in the inside of their little home. So on this show, we love to learn about the root of words and where the animal's name comes from. Etymology is just a fancy word for meaning the derivation of these words. Where do they come from? So the word beaver is of Germanic origin and is related to Dutch and German, ultimately from an Indo-European root, meaning brown. And you have to give it to them, the beaver is indeed brown. So what a fun episode. The beaver had so much to teach us, and I hope that you enjoyed it. So a little announcement here, which I probably should have said at the top of the show, given that many of you are probably asleep at this point. But for the past couple of episodes, I have been mentioning the Patreon where we will be doing live Q&As and and different things like that. I realize that at a time like this and that it is hard for so many of us, I decided to do everything that would be on the Patreon on the YouTube channel instead for free. And those of you who want to support the show in that way on Patreon, I am very grateful for that. But I want to give you guys as much Relax With Animal Facts content as possible and for free. So you guys can go to the YouTube channel Relax With Animal Facts and I will be posting everything on that YouTube channel including the lessons every other week and the Q&As. So if you want to send a piece of fan mail, maybe it's a wonderful drawing that you or your kids made or a letter, anything. I love handwritten letters and and your guys' drawings are so beautiful. You can send it to the P.O. Box, which is on the Instagram page. For those of you that don't have an Instagram or don't use an Instagram, you can send an email to relax with animal facts, and I'll be sure to respond with a P.O. Box number if that's what you want. So anyways, I thank all of you for joining me in this amazing beaver episode, and I hope that you all will join me next podcast episode when we cover the next animal. Take care.